Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make a wooden wine bottle or whiskey bottle holder. This is it here. And basically it works. You put your wine or whiskey bottle in here and it holds it upright. And it's kind of an interesting knick-knack thing you can put on your shelf or uh, mantle and display your favorite bottle of whiskey or wine. The holder itself measures 11 and a half inches long and two and a quarter inches wide and you'll notice it has a 45 degree angle cut on either end and a hole in the middle with a bevel cut around each side so that the bottle sits in there uh, smoothly. Uh, first thing we need to do is cut this board down to width I'm using a piece of red oak today. I recommend hardwood for these. Uh, I don't know that I'd use pine. They're gonna tend to uh, dent on the corners and perhaps wear a little bit. I've made them out of oak, sassafras, maple, and I believe I've used um, walnut also. Walnut looks really pretty in a piece like this. I believe this is mahogany. I bought this in the store years ago over in Ireland, uh, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, let's get to cutting this down. Uh, I wanted to mention when you're cutting hardwoods like oak, I really recommend using a dedicated ripping blade. I know I've used a lot of combination blades in the past for ripping and cross cutting on the table saw, but for ripping oak and other hardwoods, I have found that this works much better and the blade lasts a lot longer between sharpenings. So this Diablo blade works fairly well. So let's go ahead and go over to the table saw and cut this, cut two pieces down to width. I'm going to make two today. Okay, let's start cutting here. Um, make sure you wear safety glasses and on something this narrow, I always use a push stick. Next, we're going to joint the edges on the jointer, get them nice and even and smooth. Uh, the ripping blade does a really nice job of doing a, putting a smooth edge on here, but I like to use the jointer each time just to make sure that everything's nice and neat. There we go, that's all finished. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is cut the bevels on each end and 
there's really no reason to cut these to length before I start. We'll just mark the bevels on here like so. There we go, there's that one. Okay, now we'll take these over to the miter saw and cut the bevels, and uh, and then we'll have that. Okay, we're here at the chop saw, the bevel saw, whatever you want to call it, and we've set our degrees at 45 degrees here. We'll be able to cut both sides without swiveling this because they're both going the same direction. I like to line up my cuts uh, with the saw turned off and get it all lined up and then pull it through. Okay, there we go. As you can see, the saw put a nice, neat bevel on there. Um, we'll be able to pretty much use that without too much sanding or anything. Uh, it's important to pull this saw through consistently so that it doesn't burn the wood, but yet you don't want to go too fast and leave a ragged edge when it comes out the other side. And as you can see, the saw did a nice job here. Okay, we're here at the router table. As you can see, I have a router table built into my table saw. Uh, this is a Jessam Tool Company kit that I bought, and then I made the table here itself. What we're going to do is use a eighth inch roundover bit to round these edges over. They're very sharp right now, and we want to make it uh, rounded off just like the original.
Okay, there we go. As you can see, it put a nice rounded edge on each corner. Now, if you don't have a router table set up or uh, you could route these freehand also, uh, you can just do this with a piece of sandpaper. One of my favorite ways to do it though is to use a hand plane and make multiple passes and just tilt your plane as you go across each time and make a nice rounded edge on there. It works fairly well. Okay, next thing we need to do is put the hole for the wine or whiskey bottle in the center of this. And what we're going to do is measure halfway. This is 11 and a half inches. So halfway would be half of 11 and a half. That's so five and a half, five and three quarters. Okay, we'll measure our width, two and a quarter, that would be one and one eighth. Okay, we've marked the centers, and we'll go ahead and we'll hold this in place with a hold fast. So that we can drill it. Now you notice we're using a board as a backing board so that when our bit goes through it doesn't tear the wood out. And we're also using what is called a Forstner bit, one and three eighths wide. I like to use Forstner bits on wood. They make a nice clean hole through the wood. So let's go ahead and drill these out. Okay, there we go. Nice neat hole, a little bit of bit piece left on that side. Um, now you could have used a drill press on that, which I have one, but I wanted to cut it by hand for this. Okay, next thing we're going to need to do is the original has a beveled edge around here. We're going to go ahead and cut those in with a uh, small router. I'll get that set up and uh, I'll come back. Okay, as you can see, I've got my little DeWalt trim router here. And what I've done, I put an angled bit in there. It's just at a 45. And what we'll do, we'll route around here and just put that little bevel in there. And there we go. As you can see, it put a nice neat bevel around there. Uh, if you don't have a router in that bit, it'd be very easy to just put a bit of a bevel in there with either a round file, a half round file, or you could even take a piece of sandpaper and cut this in here. I don't think it's really critical. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and route the rest of these off and then we'll come back to you. Go. So there you have it. As you can see, these are not hard to make. Uh, and they make a great conversation piece. Uh, gifts at Christmas or any time of the year, somebody's birthday, you can make them something simple like this. And if you have a wood shop, you usually have scrap pieces laying around. You don't even really have to go out and buy any wood. And as you can see, this works just fine. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and finish it. I'm not going to bore you with watching me. I'll take a piece of sandpaper. It's, it's actually pretty much ready to stain. And I'll go ahead and put a coat on here and then I'll come back to you and show it. So there you have it. I finished this one off. Uh, what I did, I put a couple coats of tongue oil on here. I really like to use Minwax tongue oil finishes. They do a nice job. They're very easy to apply. You can just uh, take a rag and wipe it on. It's a wipe-on finish. And it's not as durable as polyurethane, of course, but you know, this isn't a floor or a piece of furniture that you'll be sitting on. Uh, it's really not going to wear. So it's it's an ideal finish for something like this. Now, I've been using Min, Min Wax products for many years, and they work pretty good. And we'll show you that this works pretty good. I got a whiskey bottle this time. There you go. My favorite whiskey. Okay. Um... I hope you make a few of these. They make perfect gifts, something, a conversation piece for on your mantle, on a shelf. Real easy to make and very, very low cost, if anything at all, if you have some scrap wood around. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, link some of the products we use, like the drill bit in the description below, in case you want to look and purchase some of these items. And... Let me know in the comments what you think of the video, if you'd like to see more of these little projects to make in your wood shop. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.